Um, this is interesting and, and uh, something we talked we touched on from at Jim Boy Solomon. Uh, I believe he's in Cebu. There have been rumors in Pagadian that the power interruptions are politically rooted. <laughs> No, uh, there were no elections last year, and yet we have this um, brownouts occurring. Yes. Same as um, three years, two years ago. Uh, okay. Not, not necessarily. The electric cooperatives. I mean, you talked about them before. Uh, have have the rules changed to actually make them more efficient, more accountable? Uh, has policy changed? Well, um, may not necessarily require policy change at this time. It's just that uh, we wanted the electric cooperatives to be more aggressive in terms of getting new capacities to come in, partnering with the private sector to build embedded generators. And that's been done by many of the, some of the, probably two or three co-ops in Mindanao. Yes. First, Bukidnon Electric Cooperative in Bukidnon. Um, its Francis area has no brownout because it has embedded mm. capacity with the sugar, um, crystal sugar, where that's a biomass technology. Um, two more electric cooperatives are entering into contracts for a construction of a 15 megawatt um, power plant as an embedded um, capacity in their area. So we wanted actually as a paradigm for all other electric cooperatives to look into that. Start building your own embedded capacity now. What, what role is corruption and, um, and alliances with local government officials uh, played in actually slowing down the, the development of the power sector? Mm, we may not be able to, f um, to specifically yeah. point out and quantify, but uh, it's a factor uh, for, for many of uh, the investors um, yes. the, whose projects uh, right now are pending at, at the local level. So it's really just the investors coming in, they want to maintain a monopoly, the, the guys who are there. Mm -hmm. I remember the, um, the energy secretary at one point saying that it required such political will yeah. to actually make things happen. Let me ask you then, I mean, where's Mindanao today and what do you see it doing in the next year? Well, um, we've had Mindanao is, is also in the in the era of a sweet spot in terms of um, economic development. They've seen the massive growth of investments, uh, infrastructures, the entry of, of industries, BPO sector. Mm. Real estate is mushrooming in Mindanao because we understand Calabarzon is already saturated and many of the major players are down there in Mindanao. Um, we're looking at also improving at our um, agribusiness because Mindanao is really an agri, yes. agri area and we keep exporting eight out of top ten exportable commodities in the country coming from Mindanao. Mm. We, we produce 50 percent of coconut, we produce 80 um, percent of um, many other agricultural products, we produce 100 percent rubber, 99 percent seaweeds, and yet um, most of these are not being processed in Mindanao. So we lack processing centers, so that's that's one direction we wanted to pursue. So creating to put the, the markets there. Creating yeah. the markets, creating the processing centers, and the value adding so that we can create more jobs. So part of the effort now being pursued by the Mindanao Development Authority is to look at the logistics and food chain in, in Mindanao yes. so that we would be able to see what commodity is, is very much viable in this area and therefore what infrastructure support is needed to bring um, the products from production to market centers and then to the ports and toward the global market. And, and that will also be our leverage to get more allocation in terms of infrastructure um, support because right now Mindanao has the inferior infrastructure compared yes. to this one. Yes, yes. Um, talk similar to that, I guess, mining, um, any plans? What, what are you looking at in terms of the role mining can mm. play? The Mindanao 2020, which is the framework being pursued by uh, Minda, 20-year uh, um, development uh, framework, actually looks at the minerals industry as a whole as a driver for growth. Okay. Uh, and I, I think uh, going by its contribution to uh, many areas in Mindanao, such as in Sambuanga del Norte, in Caraga, where we have currently big uh, mineral industry projects existing, um, there's a way forward for, for um, minerals industry development in Mindanao. It being able to provide uh, the much needed um, transformation in terms of um, driver for, for economic And growth. also well, in, uh, just away from the amount that the government gets to keep, but also in terms of processing it, right? The yes. same issues that you talked about. Yeah, talk about the agriculture. We, that, yeah. That's what we wanted to also um, put premium. Um, they, when they go into uh, investments in, in mining, they make sure they should make sure that there is there is processing component. So that, that there's there's so more, it, there are more jobs. It isn't just plain it. extraction Correct. of Correct. minerals. Great. Um, uh, last question here from at Evans. Why on why sun PH? Um, what are the future plans for Lagindingan Airport? Lagindingan Airport has already been uh, completed, um, except we understand uh, some navigational um, equipment that had to be installed. 
Um, there were timelines, I understand, set already by the Department of uh, Transportation and Communications for its for its opening. Um, what is what needs to be done now is is to get um, the business sector in in the area to um, also go into the transition because it's difficult. Yes. They've been used to using the what you call this the Lumbier Airport uh, and and just just how many kilometers away from the downtown now. If they move to Lagindingan and that's couple of um, kilometers, correct, and probably one. 45 minutes to one hour. Uh, so that will impact on also on cost and impact on the travel time. Your final assessment now, why would somebody come in to invest in Mindanao? It's a land of promise now turning into a land of fulfillment. Despite the power. Despite the power really issues, um, why is... A land of promise turning into a land of fulfillment. fulfillment. What a great... Okay, <laughs> please, uh, let, let me not step on <laughs> Let me not... <laughs> shut up. Did, so you, why? One, um, when SM built its, its first mall in Jensan last year and second one in, yes. uh, in Davao, they did a study um, of the um, consumption pattern of, of Mindanao and yes. it turns out Mindanaoans have higher consumption um, capacity than Metro Manila on a per transaction basis. Why is that? It's, that? it's just that by volume, Metro Manila has the largest volume. But in Mindanao, uh, well, you have a lower cost of living. You have cheaper food. Um, therefore, you can your peso can buy more when you yes. go to the malls. So, that, I guess, provides an incentive to all other investors to look at Mindanao. Um, we still have several areas that are untapped in yes. terms of agriculture development. In terms of power development, particularly in renewable energy, we have several hydro um, capacities that are of, of great potential. Biomass is also a rich potential source for, for energy in Mindanao. Um, like we're looking at palm oil as, as a major possible feedstock for biomass um, energy projects in Mindanao. Um, looking also at the services sector, Mindanao contributes, we have about 24% of the country's population yes. productive in Mindanao. That's why we have BPOs uh, coming down to Mindanao to build um, their new um, establishment or their new um, centers. Because Mindanao has been um, rated to be the next wave cities, like uh, the cities particularly of Davao, Sambuanga, uh, General Santos, Cagayan de Oro. Um, to sum it all, um, we all have everything that 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 investor would need in terms of um, the the resources to, yes. to put their business in it's just that uh, at this time and for the next two years we have a precarious issue which is power which we wanted to address so really. we need to get through the tunnel but you said light there's the a light the at the end of the tunnel so you're basically saying we got to grin and bear this there's nothing more that can be done actually from what you've said yeah. um, fantastic Thank you so much for My joining pleasure. us here. We've been speaking with Romeo Montenegro of the Mindanao Development Authority. You can continue to send questions. Um, Mindanao Development Authority is on Twitter, and we'll be tagging them. Send it to Talk Thursday. I'm Maria Ressa. Thank you for joining us.